All right. Here's the 411. The best way to memorize. Really hard to keep track of all of them in here. Professors love that. No matter how small the assignment may be, you need to have a tip number seven. I cannot stress this enough, which can result in negatively affecting your performance. It's honestly like a full time job. <laughs> hey, it's Ellie, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Ellie, and I'm currently an incoming fourth year nursing student. Oh my gosh. This is gonna be my last year of nursing school. It just hit me. Hold on, it just hit me, it just hit me. I can't believe it. I feel so old. This is my last year before graduating. Anyways, you probably clicked on this video because you're a nursing student right now, you're a freshman, you're a newbie, or you're just really interested in taking up the nursing course. So if you are new, then you should know that I also made a video like this for my first year, second year, and third year, and I have a bunch of nursing videos that you guys might wanna check out, so I will link everything down below. By the way, I apologize for the quality of this video. I'm currently using my phone right now because there seems to be a problem with my camera, but at least I'm using this mic so you guys at least get good quality sound. Moving on, third year nursing school. This is rumored to be the toughest year out of all four years in nursing school. And although I haven't experienced my fourth year yet, I do agree this was definitely more challenging than first year and second year. This is the year where you balance your classes, your clinical rotations, and your thesis all at the same time. Everything was supposed to be intense, exciting. We were supposed to get the ultimate amount of exposure in hospitals and healthcare settings, but unfortunately, because of COVID, that was not the case this year. Nursing school as we know it was smushed into our tiny devices. Face-to-face -face classes in nursing school was hard enough, and so being online brought its own new set of challenges, but I'm here to tell you guys today how I survived it all. Also, if you live in the Philippines like I do, then you know that nothing is sure yet. We're not sure when exactly we'll be going back to face-to-face -to -face classes. Nothing is 100% guaranteed, so Everything that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is based off of my experience during online classes. Now some of these tips might seem a little cliche to you guys, but these are genuinely things I wish I knew before this school year. Tip number one is to pray that you get into the same section as your best friends, and if you don't have friends in your section, make some. I promise you guys, having best friends in your section makes everything so much better, it makes everything so much fun, it's something to look forward to, and to be honest, my best friends were my number one motivation as to why I survived third year. You experience the same things together, you guys can be group mates all the time, you guys can take notes together and study together, it's just so much better when you have your best friends with you, even if it's virtually. I know my best friends are watching this right now because they are super supportive in everything that I do, so I love you guys. Mwah. Tip number two is to make Google Drive your best friend. Google Drive has always been my best friend all throughout my school years, but especially now since everything is online. I love organizing files and folders. It's just one of the things I do. I'm a very organized person. You can ask anyone I know that. I have all of my files categorized by the year, whether or not it's prelims, midterms, finals, what subject it is, what semester, you name it. And you guys definitely have to do this, especially when we're having online classes because you will have a ton of files to deal with. I promise you, it will get messy. So you want to set up a Google Drive, Google Folders, everything needs to be categorized, organized. I mean, it doesn't have to be. You don't have to do this. This is just what helps me. And so I just feel more organized and everything is just much more clean to look at. I also suggest that you never delete anything until the end of the year because you just never know what file might come in handy. Which leads me to tip number three, organize your desktop and never let it get cluttered. I know I said that I keep my files on my Google Drive, but it's also good to keep some on your desktop just in case so you guys have unstable internet connection and you just won't have access to your Google Drive. So as much as possible, whenever you download a file, you just click and drag right away to whatever folder you need to put it in so everything's automatically organized and you're not gonna have to take a lot of time to do it. So always keep your space clean and organized. Oh my gosh, I sound like Monica from Friends. But honestly, when it comes to online classes, you're gonna have to be an organized person. Tip number four, know your holy grail apps. As of now, my top four apps would be PDF Element, Quizlet, Emphasis, and Discord. So let me explain those to you. PDF Element for obvious reasons. If you guys didn't see the advertisement earlier, then watch it again. I swear you guys are gonna need this app. Especially if you guys are going paperless, if you guys have tablets or iPads, PDF Element is definitely gonna be your new buddy. I just love annotating my notes and reviewers on there. App number two is Quizlet for obvious reasons as well. Making flashcards is the best way to memorize and also there are a ton of study sets out there that other people make that you can use to study. My third app is Emphasis. Emphasis is basically an aesthetic app for using the Pomodoro technique. 
technique. And if you don't know what the Pomodoro technique is, it's 25 minutes focus, five minutes break and repeat. It's hard to hold my fingers like this. App number four is Discord. Cause I'm a gamer girl, you know, always playing ML, League of Legends. Psh. But I love using Discord instead of Messenger sometimes because I don't know why. I mean, it's the same thing. Discord is just better. <laughs> I guess it's because my friends and I specifically use Discord to like study or concentrate together. I also heard that Discord uses less of your Wi-Fi. The audio is pretty clear on there. Oh, and it reduces background noise so you guys can actually focus together and you'll only be able to hear other people when they talk. You won't be hearing their loud aircon, their loud fans, crying children, chickens clucking. Speaking of, here comes my brother right now. I can't open it. Tip number five is to keep a planner, preferably a physical one to write on. You're gonna need to keep a planner because there are gonna be a lot of things that you need to keep track of. You've got assignments, readings, case studies, quizzes, tests, nursing care plans, drug studies, group work things, videos to make, I don't know. There's gonna be a lot. And it's gonna be really hard to keep track of all of them in here. Writing them down helps you remember them more. Do yourself a favor and keep a planner. And don't just keep it, okay, write it in. I always make sure to take time during my day to update my planner, check things that I need to do, and it's just, you know, it really keeps me in the moment, keeps me up with all of the tasks that I need to do, and it's very helpful. Even if it's not just for school, even for my personal things like chores, errands, things to do in the house, it's very helpful. Tip number six, harness your creativity. Resources are limited when you're only doing classes online. I mean, you don't really get to see people, you don't really get to do activities like you used to do during face-to-face -face classes. So some of the examples where you're gonna have to use your creativity during nursing school is one, PowerPoints. You're gonna be making PowerPoints for everything. I mean, I'm not sure if it's just for my school or if it's for everybody's school, but my professors basically make us present everything in PowerPoint form. Quick story time, there was this one group work that we had to do and one group reported before us and theirs was in a really nice PowerPoint and we freaked out because ours was still on a Google Docs. So we had to make a PowerPoint like that. And that's when we realized that everybody already had theirs in a PowerPoint form, except for us. So ever since that, we had to make sure that we had a PowerPoint for everything, no matter how small the assignment may be, you need to have a PowerPoint. And even if your professors tell you that you don't need one or if they don't require you to do one, make one. I mean, honestly, you guys, if you have an assignment that you did online and you typed it on Google Docs, all you really have to do is copy and paste it to the PowerPoint, then add some little designs here and there. And this is one of the ways where you can really just show your professor in your class that you're making an effort. Professors love that. I actually have a video on how I make my PowerPoint presentation, so I will link that down below. Another example would be doing online skits. Since we couldn't really do practical skills like procedures, we really mainly focus on our communication skills. We practiced interviewing, communicating with your patients, communicating with your healthcare team, with the physician. We practiced a lot of that and we did all of that through skits, like really acting online. The professors love doing that too. And the last example would be doing our return demonstrations. Obviously, a lot of the return demonstrations that we have to do require equipment and we don't exactly have that equipment at home. So you're really gonna have to use your imagination and creativity as to what items you're gonna use to represent certain equipment. For example, a lot of the times I don't have a live patient to do my red dems on, so I use my stuffed toy. One time I didn't have my pen light, I couldn't find it, so I used an actual ball pen. I know someone who didn't have an NG tube and had to use a shoelace. Or like when I didn't have a syringe and I had to use a cupcake filling injector. <laughs> You really have to use your imagination, guys. Harness your creativity. Oh, and I also remember doing a lot of videos as well. So you're gonna have to practice your video editing skills. By the time you graduate, you're not only ready to take the boards, but you're also ready to be the next direct Kathy Molina Garcia or Steven Spielberg. Tip number seven, I cannot stress this enough. Recite, recite, recite. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I am not the most verbal person in class. I have this problem where, for example, the professor asks a question and I already know or have an answer. I'm too scared to say it because I'm so afraid of being wrong. That's one of my biggest fears because I have a really bad experience with reciting in front of the class and saying the wrong thing and being made fun of. I rarely recite. Recitations are everything, not just quizzes and tests. Those are important too, but recitations, 
Those are a big part. But I can say that during the latter part of my third year, my friends and I decided that whenever there's an easy question, recite, 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 recite. Don't be afraid to recite. So that's a tip for you guys. Recite during your online class. I cannot stress that enough. It's so important and I promise I will try to do that during fourth year. I'll update you guys on my reciting situation. Tip number eight is to avoid Zoom fatigue. If you don't know what Zoom fatigue is, it's basically that sense of exhaustion tiredness, fatigue after participating in an online meeting, whether it's a Zoom meeting, a Google Hangout, or Meet, whatever you use. So according to Healthline.com, some of the symptoms include forgetfulness, difficulty concentrating, difficulty maintaining relationships and being present with loved ones, frustration and irritability with coworkers, physical symptoms like muscle tension, pain, fatigue, and insomnia. And I can say that I have felt a lot of these, if not all, I've felt most of these symptoms. There are a lot of people out there who are like, you know, you're literally just sitting down and looking at your screen. You already do that. I mean, you're such a Gen Z millennial. You're always on your phone, so you should be used to this. No, honey, no, Karen, that's not the case. Zoom fatigue is real. I mean, you're literally sitting isolated from your whole family, from everybody. You're by yourself, sitting in front of a screen for who knows how long. It strains your eyes, it gives you migraines, it gives you terrible headaches, and it's so hard to focus. Honestly, Zoom fatigue is one of the biggest struggles of online classes. Yes, you're sitting down at a computer, a laptop, a tablet, whatever, but you're just staring there with these rays just coming out your eyes, the blue light, and it just hurts and it causes so many bad things to your body, which can result in you not being able to focus, which can result in negatively affecting your performance. I mean, I don't wanna be all sappy and I don't want any pity, but to be honest, it's really hard on my part because the work that I do on YouTube and social media requires a lot of time of me sitting in front of the computer. And so, you know, before I even get to do that, I have to be sitting in front of the computer for eight plus hours for school and it just hurts my head. It gives me terrible migraines and it's really hard for me to focus sometimes. So I really suggest you to do a few things, a couple of things in order to avoid that. I either look away or I close my eyes for just a few minutes because my eyes really start to hurt after staring at a screen for so long. Also, right after class ends, right after it ends, I shut down everything and I lay down on my bed. It really helps. You just need to get out and away from this screen as soon as possible. I also like to take some time to go outside. I like to just sit down and look at the sky and breathe in fresh air because I've been stuck in this room for so long. Honestly, I'm so sick and tired of my room because I'm always here 24-7. So it really helps to go outside once in a while. Sometimes I take a walk with my family. Sometimes I'm just sitting down on the swing and just breathing in fresh air and just looking at the sky and the flowers and the birds and breathing it all in and just letting my brain be at peace. So those are just some of the way that I avoid or overcome Zoom fatigue. Tip number nine is to make new hobbies and try new things constantly. Because I feel like nursing just takes over your life. It's just what you think about 24 seven. I mean, I literally have classes from Monday to Saturday and then Sunday, I can't really think, I can't really rest because then I have to prepare for a quiz I have on Monday and just my whole life is revolved around nursing. So sometimes I like to do things that are completely not related to nursing at all so I can just really mentally, emotionally, and physically take a break from all of this nursing that's happening in my life. So I've currently started getting into reading again. I honestly used to be quite the bookworm. I would read all the time during my younger days and then it completely stopped but I started getting back into it again. I started playing my guitar again, my piano, because to be honest, they're just laying there, but I never get to touch it because I'm so busy with school. So sometimes I just really take the time to sit down, play my instruments, read some books. It just really helps with getting my mind off of things related to school. And for my last tip, tip number 10 is to talk to the people that you live with. Understand each other. I'm gonna have to adjust my seat for this one. All right. Here's the 411, okay? Nursing school, it's hard. It's hard enough. Nursing school being online is crazier. The load is crazy. And you have so many things to think about. Like I said earlier, you're gonna have so many online quizzes to take. You're gonna have so many case studies to review, so much group work. You have your thesis, you have rec dems to learn, and you always have to be alert. You always have to have your device with you because you never know when you're gonna get a notification about a new assignment or a quiz that's coming up tomorrow morning. You just always have to be constantly aware 24 seven because you just never know 
what's gonna come up. It's honestly like a full-time job. It was so much easier back then when it was your house and school. Your house and school. But now, it's like your school is in your house and you're just mixing everything up and everything is just one big mush. So for me, I have a lot of things to handle. I have my school and I also have house chores. And sometimes it can be really hard to handle your house chores when you have school from morning until the evening. I mean, I know people say like, oh, it's just time management. No, it's it's more than time management. It's It's how you're feeling in the moment. It's where you're at in regards to your mental health and your emotional health and how you're physically feeling because that has a lot of effect on how you perform in any aspect in your life. If you're physically, emotionally, and mentally drained from school, it's gonna be hard to handle everything else. Now, I'm not saying that you should only solely focus on school and forget helping around the house. I'm not saying that. I just really suggest that you take some time to talk, really communicate with each other so you guys can understand each other or have a schedule that you can set so you're able to balance everything in life, both school and home things. I'm really grateful that my parents and my family are very understanding. They know that when I never come down, I don't even come down to eat sometimes. It means I'm really busy with school. So I'm very grateful that I have understanding parents and I have a sister who takes care of everything that I need to take care of most of the time. So I'm very grateful for my family. And I suggest that you take the time to do the same with your family and just kind of communicate and just regularly talk and let them know how you really are doing and they'll also let you know how they feel and you guys can just come into this agreement and mutual understanding and so your life is peaceful everybody's life is peaceful so i really suggest that you do that especially for third year nursing because third year nursing is the hardest year so far i'll update you guys after my fourth year but for now those are the tips I can give to you guys on how to survive your third year of nursing school. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social media right here. I'm Ellie, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!